What is up, bros? Me, Josh, here in today's video. We're doing another episode of Breaking It Down, my series where I go into certain games I've played, kind of break down what I'm doing, hopefully help you guys out, give you guys a glimpse into um, what I'm thinking. This has been a really highly requested series, and I've been having a lot of fun doing it. Looks like you guys have been enjoying it as well. So, what do we have right here? The situation is, first of all, it's the Duca the Osta, no, Duca the Abruzzi whatever it's called, uh, the Abruzzi, the Tier 7. This is still a work in progress ship, so i got to put that up there. But a Tier 7 Italian cruiser, so still work in progress. Got to put that up. I'll put a link down below to the review on this ship. Um, it's been kind of work in progress for a while. But I decided to take it out. One of the uh, subs requested that I play this ship, and it ended up being a pretty good game. But the situation we're in, we are a cruiser at bottom tier. So this happens a lot. Uh, I was requested some people play like a, or some people requested that I play some bottom tier stuff, or you know I can't really pick it, but um, this ended up being a pretty good game, and this is on Sleeping Giant, the newest map. So um, this is one that we normally don't play like this on random battles, as you can see the situation. Um, we normally go this this match is usually fought between B and C, but we're actually since we're a relatively fast division, even the Lions relatively quick, and I'm fast as well. Um, and the Gaja, we actually went to uh, A, B. So as you can see, I'm going wide around here in case something does pull uh, this way. I am bottom tier. Um, although there are a lot of sevens, but if a Sharnhorst or something pulls out around that corner, you know, we're kind of playing this a bit more like we play our clan battles. Um, if one of those things would have posted up there, they could have absolutely obliterated me. And um, uh, we could have... Uh, gotten smashed there so communicated with uh with my dd to make sure he didn't take my torps he's gonna go in there kind of hold down that point and i am throwing both of my torps right on that because you won't actually see them if they're getting if they're rounding this corner you're gonna see them as soon as they've rounded that so um you're not gonna see them kind of right here you'll see them as soon as they get here because of the clipping on this island i think uh sleeping giant right now still has some of the worst clipping in this game um, for beaches and stuff like that and, and, and islands. I don't know if they went through with really the fine-tune uh, kind of edger, I guess, or whatever the tool would be for uh, game development, but be careful going around corners and stuff like that on this map because you will get clipped a lot more. I've noticed it a lot of, of beaching when you shouldn't have beached situations. But again, now keeping a pretty good angle, um, watching this corner, I have both sets of torps going that way. One good thing about this ship is it has 12 kilometer torps and I can push that way and we can really start working that. But right now we're just trying to take a, a, a an idea of where all the ships are right now. And one thing about this ship is it has a decent little... Um, arc so we can get into this area not get detected because as you, as you can see only one destroyer here everything else is going this way this tends to be a lemming towards C and um, so if we can post up here then we can you know kind of be all right and just kind of shoot out of here without getting spotted which is exactly what you want as a cruiser you want to use environment so Sharnhar is the first one we can work there. Again, not getting spotted, so we know nothing's cheeky over here. Um, we know nothing's over here, um, so we're going to be all right. But we're really trying to work out where to go next and where to start getting some damage done. So our lion's going to start pushing in, and we're going to try to help with some of these destroyers. Uh, because the faster we can kill destroyers on this map, destroyers will, will win you this game. Um, will win you this map, at least, because uh, this map is all about all about control because everywhere kind of has a pinch point of where you want to go so vision's massive because there's so many islands and um uh, controlling where things are and and uh holding things into a corner because everything has to round some kind of corner on this map so uh uh destroyers are very very strong now one thing we're keeping an eye on is the baltimore now we have our lion right here so the baltimore won't be too aggressive so i think i would think hey if the baltimore is going to push our lion might smash him and then I can just sit here and kind of farm these guys, especially this Sharn Horse that continues to kind of throttle Jackie weirdly and, um, you know, just kind of sit there. So that's some that's some free damage. We've gotten really unlucky in some of our hits, though, throughout this game and doing kind of no pen damage, but I think that's kind of the ship. Uh, right now, though, we are start, kind of starting to lose some of our ships. Our Mogami pushed mid, uh, our Chappie got obliterated, you know, Battleship's focusing, any cruiser is going to die. Our Indy got too aggressive, but still... It's not over. We can start to work these guys. And again, if we can just keep our DDs alive, we'll be okay. Two destroyers, especially at Gaja. What else do we have? We had a Fletcher. If they can stay alive, then we're going to be in a really, really good spot. So I'm going to try to help out and um, and work these guys. Mainly work that destroyer if I can. The Edinburgh, I wish I would have had AP loaded there. Uh, but not much we can really do. So 
I know I'm relatively safe right here. Not much is going to have an angle on me. The Colorado is not focusing on me. And so if I can pump in any damage on that DD, that's going to be great. So we put him on fire, got the kill, and um, we're going to pump on some damage on that Edinburgh. So our battleship is kind of committed going this way. So I'm going to rotate to that Baltimore. That Baltimore is going to be rounding that point. And if I can take him out or surprise him with torpedoes, because he doesn't really know I'm turning this way. So I figured, one, he'll probably radar me at some point, so then he'll know. And uh, our line can kind of push and get his guns towards that, because he's going to have broadside on almost all those guys. And it's better me rotating that way, working these this battleship down. Because especially if he can kind of push towards mid, he's going to have these guys to focus on and all those broadsides. Me, I could push around, potentially kill this Baltimore, whatever, get a trade on this Baltimore, and then I can then flank, which the ship will do pretty well since it's relatively quick. So, trying to get a spot on this Baltimore, and um, this is kind of where the game turns into a normal cruiser game. So, <clears throat> as you can see, uh, I'm telling him to push through, and then I'll hold down this. Since the the uh, Italian cruisers have decent torp arcs, um, as you can see right here, I'm trying to get it lined up. This is my mistake, and you know, as we all know, it only takes one mistake <laughs> in a cruiser's life to uh, to have a different game. So I was gonna post up here and do as I popped the plane, so I got a spot, and I am way more broadside than I wanted to be here. So cruiser life, Baltimore, as you know. <laughs> as 203s, it's a hard-hitting ship, and uh, he chunks me for massive, massive, massive damage. Almost 18k on that salvo. Luckily, we bounced a decent amount there. We have torps on the other side. As you can see, I was aiming there for the front guns. So uh, that's one thing to always do. Maybe if you are brawling, especially in a a cruiser or something with torps, aim for the front guns because then not you're not really focusing on taking them out. If, if in a brawling situation try to inca incapacitate their front guns. That's what you're trying to do. You're not trying to destroy them or do anything like that. All you're doing is trying to temporarily incapacitate that. If he got lucky again, he just obliterates me and murders me right there. But we were able to, with our good torp angles, get a good uh, good another set on him, takes him down. Luckily, our battleship put in a nice little salvo on him. <clears throat> and then, a, a, you know, regardless, a nice little trade um, if I wouldn't have survived there, tier 7 for tier 9. Dying in this game is not that, it's not that bad. Um, uh, but, uh, as long as you get a trade, as you can see, <coughs> our Fletcher, sorry about the, uh, coffin gas, I think I'm on the borderline of being sick right now. Um, our Fletcher didn't get a very good trade because he killed himself. So that's not, that's not very good. Uh, and, uh, but now I'm in a good situation, but I have to play this very carefully. So the situation I'm kind of, uh, breaking down in this game is bottom tier low life cruiser. If you have ever played cruiser, you know that one mess up and you're basically out of the game. So what do you do if you are low life as a cruiser? One, you're gonna kinda play the chase game and you're gonna play very, very, very passive and you're gonna use environment to keep farming damage. Since you are still a ship, um, you can keep doing damage, right? And especially if you have adrenaline rush, you can even potentially do more damage, more DPM. But we're not going to YOLO and just kill off ourselves because that's what stupids do. So we're going to use environment correctly. We're going to use our Wazda hacks. We're going to get very lucky on the Sharnhorst salvo because I figured he was going to keep shooting HE since he was all game. And he scared the ever-living hell out of me with this salvo. And I thought I was dead. But the speed of this ship um, kind of got me. Was it this salvo? Maybe it been next salvo. Yeah, it must have been next salvo. But I am going to try to use... There's the salvo right there. Oh, that's the HE salvo. Um, but I'm going to try to use this island. If I can get in between the Sharnhorst and this Algiri, nothing up here can spot me. Because remember, with the new bloom effect, your detection when you fire only goes out to uh, to whatever your range of your firing range is. So um, I'm going to try to get this island in between this Algiri and I. The Sharnhorst rotated up. And then we can start working on him. So, um, And I was hoping maybe that he would even turn into those torps. But we have kind of brought this game back, and we're in a really good spot right now. Um, we have a Freddy and a Missouri. Uh, Freddy versus Missouri. Kind of our group, and we're in a really, really good spot. Although I'm very low, and that's a Sharn Horse, and he can obliterate me in one salvo. I figured maybe I can kite this uh, LG Re out and at least get the trade on him, or do a good amount of damage. But again, 
dying in this game isn't the worst thing in the uh, worst thing in the world, right? It's all about getting good trades. If you can uptrade, and it's always nice when you're lion, lols, and this is the salvo that scared me. So I turned. I thought he was shooting HE the whole time. I did just notice he was shooting AP on the replay, but um, we're trying to do the was the thing. I am perfectly broadside, but it is a Sharn horse, and this dude has been playing kind of not the best. But I got lucky right there. 100% I got lucky. And one, we're going to use our range and start using, because now I don't have both two ships to worry about. I just have the one. And on accident, I pop my AA, so all planes that are imaginary around me will start working down. But. We're going to be using that spotter plane to shoot over the little island because if he does get spotted by our DD that's right in front of us right there, which he will shortly, um, he'll be around the island so he won't spot me but I'll spot I'll be able to shoot at him. So again, we're going to keep these islands in front of him. So as you can see on this plane right here, if I zoom out, you, you, we have almost an entire plane right here of stuff that can't see us. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to push up using these islands, breaking that guy's line of sight and I'm gonna get behind this island. On this map, this this they have three really, really, four actually really good islands. They have top island right here, the bottom island right here. This island is god tier for clan battles. And the Sharn Horse goes down, rounds the corner, follows the gray line. And this island is okay, it's not as good as the top one. But we're gonna be, basically, I'm not, I'm not gonna shoot until I get into position right here. As you can see, there's a nice dip in this island right here as I jerk all over the place. Um, there's a nice dip right here, so what this actually is, unless a plane spots me or a ship, which we know the ships are right here, I'm going to be able to post up behind this island in this little dip and just start farming these guys since it looks like they're pushing through this area right here. So that's the plan. Even if something's spotted, I will not shoot until I am posted up because if I did shoot, uh, this Colorado looks like he's been playing pretty well. Um, they took out a couple ships, so this is where you can't uh, rack a Disciprin, because if you do, you will end up just getting killed. So, um, even though the shot seems amazing, and potentially, you know, he shot his front salvo, I could have probably taken the shot. When you're this slow, just don't throw away your ship. There's no reason for it. You know, there's no, there's no reason for me to risk that to potentially get, what, maybe a fire? Maybe. So, I'm going to guarantee my position... And then I'm going to open up and be an effective gunship. Um, looks like he is... Uh, I think he's flooding right now. He's either flooding or healing. But he's on fire. So now I'm in the right spot. He can't do anything. And I, as you can see, I'm going to slow down. And because of this island and this dip, he can't do anything. So we'll just farm damage. So we didn't risk potentially taking a shot from something. Um, you know, he could have got his back guns on me. He could have got something on me. Uh, but, you know, he didn't. So, because we didn't shoot, so he has no idea, well, he has an idea of where I am, but there's not really much he can do. And of course, the Missouri's not going to be in our range. One thing we need to keep an eye out for, though, is the Edinburgh, because he could round this corner, put our DD in, in danger, and potentially spot me. But, again, we posted up in the right spot. We're using, um, you know, with only 3,000 life left. Um, and actually, our division played really well for bottom tier. Uh, and he's kind of stuck in a tough spot with Gaja Torps coming at him. And um, I even told the Freddy it was a decent ram 1v1 if he wanted to go for it. So, in go the shells. Now, this isn't in the same damage game, and most of these kind of breaking it down games won't, won't be like insane damage games. But it's just kind of showing you guys what a... Uh, and there's the Colorado gets the uh, kill on our DD. These really aren't like about showing off... Oh, crazy, blah, 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 look how, look how much damage it did. It's about thinking that a lot of us get in situations like this. And, um, you know, I, I've seen a lot of people, that what they'll do is they'll just say, well, I'm dead anyway, I might as well just do this. I'm dead anyway, I'm basically dead. No, you're not dead, because if you never get spotted and no one's going to hit you with a miracle blind shot, you probably won't die. So, you know, one thing you see this a lot with is aircraft carriers is when they're out of planes, especially in lower tiers, they just YOLO into the middle. They're like, there's no reason for it. I might as well just try to go for a ram or something like that. One, you're not going to get a ram. Two, you're just giving the team points. I mean, there's been games where I've lost because CVs or ships just YOLO'd because they said, well, I'm dead anyway. I might as well just, just try to go for something. If you can post up like I was there, I was sitting at 3K life. That's one full pen from that Colorado. And I farmed an extra little bit of damage, helped kill that battleship, and, you know, didn't give them... Because in that situation, we could have potentially lost that. 
you know if if i die there the gaja dies um let's say the missouri hits a little bit better shot on that uh freddy that's like a three ship swing and then potentially that colorado could heal up and, and kill our line you never know so um don't throw your ships away you, you can definitely still post up um it's a little tougher with ships that are lower trajectory um that they can't really shoot over stuff very well like things like the moskva um zao can't really post up but you can use um you you know if you're far enough back from the island you can shoot over it. so just kind of use environment to keep to keep alive and pump out more and more damage and if you're using adrenaline rush you can do more damage more dpm um by actually taking more damage so if you're thinking about that way but here's a nice little breakdown guys bottom tier and low life on a cruiser and especially in the work in progress of bruzy but hope you guys enjoyed this video hope you guys are liking this series let me know in the comments below um what you guys kind of think uh, uh of 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 cruiser life that's what we always call it on the stream is cruiser life and and you know getting punished by one salvo and taking two-thirds of your life or getting dev struck off the planet it definitely does happen but anyways guys here's a nice little game with a tier 7 italian cruiser still work in progress hope you guys enjoyed this video remember like subscribe and i'll see you guys next time